Hey guys, Kiwi here, warning of spoilers for Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul to Season 6, Episode 6. In this video, I'll be breaking down discussing Lalo Salamanca executing the next part of his plan. Like the video if you end up enjoying it, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter for more Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad updates. If you really enjoy what I do here, maybe even consider checking out my Patreon, or give back to the channel by clicking on the Super Thanks button under the video. With that being said, let's jump into the breakdown. So we just get one scene with Lalo in this episode, but oh boy, is it a big one. Before we get too ahead of the axe and grind, I'll give a quick recap for what led Lalo to this situation. In the last episode, we saw Lalo in Germany first talking to Werner's wife and then sneaking inside Werner's house. I have a full video breaking it down in depth, so I'll be brief, but the point of it all was Lalo wanting to find more proof on what work Werner was doing for Gus. When Lalo couldn't get any information out of Marguerite in regards to Werner and his work, he instead decided to search for Werner's men. This is because Werner's men kept a distance from Marguerite due to them knowing more more about the work for Gus, leading Lalo to break into Werner's house and figure out who his men were. Lalo finds the slide rule encased in acrylic and realizes it's a condolence gift from Werner's men. He looks at the manufacturer label and then off screen between episodes, went to the manufacturer to find out who ordered the slide rule gift. One thing I love about this show is how it doesn't spoon feed you. The show creators know their audience and they know how attentive the viewers are so they know to just drop enough hints for the viewers to put two and two together. It's a better method of storytelling making the viewers figure things out for themselves instead of ham-fisting the story at us. This is why I don't mind seeing some moments off screen or I guess not seeing them, giving us the aha moment whenever we notice key points that connect. So we predicted that Lalo would go meet up with Kai due to Kai being the most notable man from Werner's crew. This is because he was given the most screen time due to being the biggest troublemaker out of the group so to speak. But instead of Kai we see Casper who is the one that told Mike that it was worth 50 of you back when Mike and Gus sent Werner's men home until Lalo was taken care of. But now, I guess Lalo's gonna be the one taking care of Casper. But so why didn't Lalo go see Kai? Well, I assume that Lalo didn't have Kai's info and instead got Casper's info due to Casper presumably being the one to order the slide rule in acrylic. So Lalo arrives at Casper's cabin as he's chopping wood, foreshadowing the brutal chopping we'll see in just a moment. Lalo confronts him by first making small talk and mentioning the fresh air in the woods, which does really help towards the atmosphere. Casper asks Lalo who he is and if they've ever met, to which Lalo says not officially. Casper actually has seen Lalo briefly before, during the season 5 premiere when Gus had Werner's men pretend to work on something above ground to try and fool Lalo, although that was unsuccessful. So Casper starts running off, realizing that Lalo is part of the Gus Frank slash cartel situation. Lalo takes out his gun, but wants to capture Casper alive due to needing information out of him, which is obviously the whole reason why he's there. We even see Lalo have a line of sight on Casper as he's running away, but he doesn't take the shot and instead chases him. Casper runs into a barn, which kind of confused me at first as it's a dead end. Since he presumably lives there, he'd know the surrounding woods pretty well and probably would have been able to lose Lalo. The cover of the trees in the forest along with Casper's upper hand in terrain knowledge would have been sufficient. Maybe he was just so panicked that he wasn't thinking, which I can't really blame him, just trying to take cover inside a structure instead of out in the open. Lalo wasn't going to shoot Casper dead without getting info first, but Casper didn't know that in the moment. The gun could have understandably spooked him, causing him to hide in his barn. Lalo starts searching and clearing Casper's storage barn, but Casper gets the upper hand on him, striking him in the stomach with the back of the axe. Now this is where I start to raise an eyebrow. First off, I want to preface that I do love this scene. I was really in the moment during my initial viewing and on the edge of my seat with my heart racing. That being said, I'd be lying if the thought of plot armor didn't instantly cross my mind in this moment that Lalo gets hit. Casper really should have hit him with the sharp end while he had a chance. Yeah, not everyone's a killer and maybe Casper wanted answers of his own, but when a man comes to your home and starts chasing you with a gun, it's time to not take any chances. Secure your own safety, obviously the first option being fleeing, or if you need to, which in Casper's case because he was in a dead end, self-defense, and then ask questions later. So back to the axe and grind of it all. I do think this moment of Casper striking Lalo was crazy. Although it's not impossible for Lalo to have died here, I knew it had to be a fake out. Casper did something stupid, so to speak, by not finishing Lalo while he had the chance. Lalo dying here would have been anticlimactic and rather pointless to the story, but it would have been wildly shocking. In a way, it just would have been a crazy subversion of expectations having Lalo randomly die in a barn halfway across the world in a German forest, leaving his plans and vendetta against Gus incomplete. Which is obviously why they didn't do that, but it still would have been crazy. You know, I will however praise the realism in how winded Lalo is after getting stricken by the back of the axe. He doesn't just say ow and brush it off 
off. He's visibly shocked and caught off guard, wheezing and barely able to speak a single word while trying to answer Casper's interrogation. Lalo reveals his true name to Casper, which isn't good news for him. Lalo also mentions his affiliation with Gus Fring, along with showing the manufacturer card to explain how Lalo found him. Lalo hides a razor behind the card while trying to hand it over to Casper, and then slashes him in the face with it. I don't know where Lalo got the razor blade from, if I missed seeing him pick it up in the barn, or if he just always has a razor blade on him for some reason just in case. Does he always have one on him? Did he specifically pre-plan on using this against Casper while giving him the card from before he even arrived in the forest? Casper does something else stupid by leaning in and getting close enough to Lalo to retaliate. I'm surprised Casper couldn't tell that Lalo Lalo was looking for an opening. Casper should have kept his distance with the axe instead of leaning in and making himself vulnerable. Now I don't mean to dog on this scene, I do feel like I'm giving it a harder time than it deserves. I really enjoy it and both moments when Lalo gets hit along with when he gets the upper hand were exciting. I just feel like I have to mention these slightly immersion breaking moments. They don't break my immersion so much to the point that it ruins the scene to me, but there are little moments that kind of left me scratching my head. Casper running into his own dead end barn instead of continuing on deeper into the forest, Casper hitting Lalo's plot armor instead of using the sharp end of the axe to strike him with, along with Casper letting his guard down enough for Lalo to get the upper hand. I get not everyone's perfect, and hindsight is 2020, so I don't mean to just sit here and point out every little mistake that Casper made while being filled with adrenaline, fleeing for his life, thinking on the moment. This totally caught him off guard, so I can see how he didn't have a perfect getaway plan, but you gotta admit, he made some pretty big mistakes. Anyways, back to Lalo getting the upper hand. I feel like I've been down dancing around the elephant in the room that is the meat and potatoes of this confrontation, so let's get to it. After slashing Casper with the razor blade, Lalo gets a hold of the axe and in one swoop completely chops Casper's foot off. This was an incredibly intense moment, showing some gruesome gore that this show and universe doesn't usually focus on. Lalo starts low-key freaking out in a joking way over Casper possibly breaking one of his ribs, undermining the fact that he literally just chopped Casper's foot off. I mean, at least it's not a Colombian necktie. Lalo then grabs a belt as a tourniquet for Casper's leg so he won't bleed out, but Lalo won't be dragging Casper to a hospital. Maybe if he did, Casper's life would be saved, but he instead just keeps Casper alive long enough for Lalo to get the info he needs. Since we already know what Casper was working on for Gus, we don't really need this information re-explained to us, so it makes sense that the scene would end here with Lalo interrogating Casper off-screen along with his implied death. You know, it's pretty obvious what's happening here and what's going to happen, so the rest of it isn't really necessary to see on screen. But note the difference in Casper's interrogation compared to Lalo's. Lalo did what Casper couldn't do but should've. Casper tries questioning Lalo when he should've fatally wounded him, which is what Lalo ends up doing to him immediately afterwards. As bad as I feel for Casper, I hope that Lalo gets the info that he needs just so that he can return to either Mexico or Albuquerque by the mid-season finale, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, did you notice any of the same issues that I did with the scene, or did you just thoroughly enjoy it. I feel like I'm a bit of both, I noticed the flaws, but I was still able to really enjoy it for what it's worth. Also, both actors here did an amazing job, and it was really cool to see a German forest in the show, which is the direct opposite scenery that we're usually used to in the show in regards to New Mexico and the Mexican desert. Also, Gus's actor Giancarlo did an amazing job directing this, and I just can't praise that enough, I'll be mentioning it more in my actual 606 review. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, and if you're new to the channel or just haven't yet already, subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on when I post new content on Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. Check out my Patreon or give a super thanks to help support the channel financially. If you got a few spare bucks lying around, it'd mean a lot, and also thanks to those who have already. But most importantly, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out! Oh, you broke one of my ribs!